Hey, hey, hey. Shouting out from London. Um, I'm waiting to see who will come on and say hi to me. It's a great day. Um, the weather's good. Not too cold. And, um, just finished doing a taping. Hi, Antonio. How are you? Hey, Sandra. Good to see you. <laughs> You're right, Pip Pip Cheerio. I am in London town and it is interesting. I don't think I have been to London ever and landed in the airport and just seen a nobody. By the time I got to baggage, it was already going around the turnstile. I've never been in Heathrow and not had to wait for a while for my bags. And when I came out, boy, uh, the only person in the ex in the uh, welcome lounge was my driver to take me to my destination. <laughs> it was amazing. I enjoyed. Hi, Habib. I uh, enjoyed uh, the lack of traffic. Of course, I don't like the reason why it's that way, but um, it definitely makes a difference in traveling when you're not going through all the obstacles of people and waiting for uh, luggage and such. It's been quite interesting because things are shutting down. Um, even in London, uh, people are staying home. I don't have cabin fever yet, I must say. I think I had already been in quarantine without realizing it. Hi, Karen. How are you? Um, I was in Michigan with my parents for two weeks. Um, they had, my mom had just had knee replacement surgery and my dad also needed some uh, care and loving on. And so, I was there for two weeks, not really getting out of the house anyway. So I think I'm kind of used to just being in the house. I was cook, housekeeper, uh, cleaner, laundry person, nurse, doctor. I was everything. And it was so much fun um, to just spend that kind of time, quality time with my parents for two weeks. And then uh, my friend Valencia came to drive me. She thought she was driving me to the airport. I was supposed to be going to Atlanta to preach for Bishop Browner at Word of Faith, but uh, that service got canceled because of the new rules that apply about uh, large gatherings. So we kept driving and we drove all the way to Chicago, believe it or not. Well, once I got to Chicago, I thought I would get to see friends and then uh, go on to London. I was supposed to leave on Tuesday and I just had this sneaking suspicion. So I got on the phone, called the airlines, American Airlines, and said, do you think I need to leave earlier? They said, oh, no, you're fine. We're on schedule. Everything is good. And half hour later, I got a, your flight is canceled text. So I had to dash onto the phone and get out of uh, the States as soon as I could, which was Monday morning. It was now Sunday night. I wasn't quite ready. Hi, Lauren. I saw you came on. Hi. Um, is that Michelle? And, uh, oh, they canceled the remainder of your contract at the Metropolitan Opera. Oh, no. Well, you know what? I've got something to say about all of that. I really think it's a time for all of us to stop and recalibrate. You know, when a train is, is switching tracks, it has to come to a full stop first. And you might feel like you're not making any progress, but when it switches tracks, it's off and running at breakneck speed again in a new direction. And I really have a sense in my spirit that that is where this whole thing is headed. Hi, Michelle. How are you? I am believing that this is going to turn out to be good. Right now, it's uncomfortable. It's not fun. But, you know, it's also a time that you should take full advantage of. Um, if that, if, you know, we don't get this kind of downtime. We're always running. I've been promising to clean out a closet for forever. When I get home, that's what I'm doing. I'm finally, because believe it or not, I'm in London, right? Um, but Ghana has a, is saying that they're not allowing anyone in unless they are a Ghanaian resident or citizen. Fortunately, I have a Ghanaian passport. 
so I will be able to go home. But when I arrive in Ghana, I will have to self-quarantine for 14 days. So I'm going to take advantage of that time. I'm going to finish that book proposal I was working on. I'm going to clean out my closets. I'm going to do my taxes early for once in my life. Well, almost early. I'm, I'm running behind. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot that, uh, that we can take advantage of during this time. Hi, Terry. I love you. Mwah, my big brother is on the line. Yeah, so I had to literally escape from the States to get to London. Of course, I had four different um, speaking engagements here in London. They have all been canceled as well. Um, but I am doing, um, hi Gretchen, how are you? And Alvina, how are you? You know, so um, they've all been canceled, but I did a taping this morning with Bishop Wayne Malcolm um, and Pastor Temi, uh, and it was just a great time of just talking about all this stuff. You know, fear is so rampant, and you know, God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a, a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. And, and why those three things? You know, power is the power to overcome all things. Love overcomes all things. And a sound mind keeps us secure uh, so that we can move forward without hesitation. So God wants us to stand firm and know that because he is still on the throne, he didn't take a vacation. He's not even looking the other way. He's looking at us and watching our response to this time. You know, I really believe that Attitude is everything at a time like this. Um, I think that this is just a test. I really do believe this is just a test. I believe that there are worse things to come and that what we learn from this will help us to be able to stand in even tougher times because as time continues forward, it says that the earth is groaning and waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. And I believe that this is not God's judgment. I think it's his shaking and waking. I think that it is his wake up call to us to say, hey, people, get your act together. Trial and pain always calls attention to things we've overlooked or ignored. It lets us know that something is wrong and that something needs to be fixed. So it is critical for us to really press in to spending quiet time with God during this time, going back to the word of God, back to the basics, not regurgitated out of someone else's mouth, but just you and God between the two of you, because he's got a personal word for you in this season of how he wants to prepare you for the next season of life. I remember when I was younger, they used to do these tests on TV and they would come on and the screen would go black and you would just see color bars and they, they would say, this is just a test. This is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. And I believe that this is a test of the emergency Godcasting system where God is saying to us, are you ready? Are you ready to face the days ahead? There's going to be more shaking and waking. There's going to be more stuff that's going to be dislodged and dismantled because I'm raising up new voices in the earth. I'm getting rid of some garbage. I'm taking the fat off and I'm going to make you lean and mean for the days ahead. And I think that once we condition ourselves mentally and spiritually, you know, I find it very interesting that they're saying, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. And for me, it's always about what is the spiritual parallel to the natural message that's being broadcast. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. What does that remind you of? Cleanse your hands, O ye sinners. All right. Um, that's what the word says. Purify yourself. So while the world is telling us to get clean, God is saying, get clean. He's saying, if my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear and heal the land. Mm. Interesting, isn't it? You know, there's just been so much garbage going on. And sometimes it accumulates at such a rapid rate that it becomes our normal. I think we've gotten used to profits for profit, P-R-O-F-I-T. We've gotten used to ministers just doing whatever they feel like doing. We've gotten used to church folks having a relationship with God on their terms instead of God's terms. We've gotten used to raggedy saints. We have gotten used 
to so much stuff that is not what God wants for his people or for church. Now, the building is not church. We are the church. And perhaps we'll discover that when we can't get into those church buildings. Yes, I am I am thankful for the technology. I am thankful that amazing men of God and amazing women of God will be streaming messages to give us hope and refresh our faith. But it begins with you individually. And so I hope that during this time, you'll rediscover the church in you. That you'll have church all by yourself with God, worshiping, praising him, dancing in his presence and sitting still, being still and knowing that he is God and hearing what he has to say to you. I think it's an exciting time. I can't wait to see the newness that's going to come out of this. He's definitely destroying old wineskins and making room for new wine. And that is exciting to me. And in the midst of it, so many good things can go on. Thank you for showing me love. You know, because here I am, all my engagements have been canceled. When I don't eat, I don't eat if I don't speak, okay? But you know what? I believe God. I trust him for provision. I trust him to provide for me. And he's going to do that beautifully for me as well as for you. And for all the control freaks out there that can't control anything in your universe right now, guess what? God is still in control. He is still on the throne. He hasn't left. He didn't go on vacation. He's not blinking. He's not sleeping. He is just still got his hand stretched out over us. He has released angels to take care of us and to walk us through this thing. So how is your health? We keep telling people, be healthy, be healthy. And the word says that I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. There it is. You see, so for every natural thing, there is a spiritual equivalent of where God wants us to be at this time. Clean hands, clean hearts, healthy bodies, healthy spirits, sound minds, Fear, fear is the opposite of faith. Fear is false evidence appearing real. What is the false evidence? The false evidence is that, oh my gosh, we're not going to make it through this. That's not true. It's the opposite. We will make it through. And there will be many lessons learned and many things that are unnecessary being dismantled to raise up new altars unto God that are stable and sure and strong. How have you been feeling through this? I hope that, hi, Mark, my Sharona. I love Mark Sharona, one of the deepest men of God I know. He is such an amazing man of God. While you're at home, that's a good one to log on to and watch Mark Sharona. He always has an amazing word um, to share with people. We go way back. Yes, um, the earth groans awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. People are looking to see how we respond during this time. You know, people of God that know God cannot be in fear. What hope would the rest of the world have? Oh my gosh. Well, if they know God and they're afraid, what should I be? Think about that. So we've got an example. It talks about us walking in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. We're reflecting someone. We're representing someone other than ourselves. So how we walk through this is major. It reflects on the nature of God, his ability as a father to take care of his children. God is faithful. And you know what? Let me remind you right now that God is your father. And what do now some of us might say, oh, well, that's not reassuring because my father was just a mess. God is the only perfect father. And that being said, the model of fatherhood that he set up was one of protection, security and provision, as well as giving life. And that is his promise to you. So, you know, hold your loved ones close. I think that there are a lot of things going on. There's there's so much that I can't even settle on what I really want to talk about because my head is so full of all the different thoughts of what is happening at this time. I saw an amazing tweet. Well, actually, several of them. 
with parents who are at home trying to help homeschool their kids were saying teachers need to be paid more. And I just laughed. I said, the poor teachers have been protesting forever, begging for money. And now people are being forced to see their worth. And I think about the business industry. I think business is going to change. The way business is done is going to change. People are going to discover the upside of people staying home and working from home, working through technology. They won't have to pay for huge office buildings anymore, they, that, which means that they can actually pay their workers more. Um, the workers will be at home. And you know what? They'll be more productive because they're in their own environment where they can take care of things at home and get the work done. I think that we're going to see some new things on the horizon. Hi, Michelle Garner. It's been so good to uh, to see you on here. It's been a long time. You know, uh, so when we think about this, um, there are so many new things that can come out of this. So many opportunities for positive change that um, we shouldn't be afraid. We need to start looking for the good things. We need to start um, even reflecting on how we handle our own lives. You know what this has made me think about? Being more responsible financially. You know, some people are in a good position because they've been savers and investors. Um, and some people have just lived from day to day. What do your finances look like? Can you be secure for an entire year if the place shuts down and you can't get out to do things and your boss says, I'm sorry, we don't have money to pay you? These are things that we have to look at. We have to look at the big picture. We tend to be a bit myopic about life, living for the here and now. As the scripture says, the people just said, let us rise up and play because tomorrow we die. But tomorrow is not promised. The sands are shifting right now. Everyone is saying, oh, things are so fluid, so fluid. Uh, you know, we're closing today. We're going tomorrow. We're doing this. We're doing that. No one knows what's going on. Uh, it's a very unsure time. And yet uh, that old song comes to mind in times like these, you need a savior in times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. That is the only firm foundation. Everything else shifts. Everything else changes. And from day to day, when we live in an uncertain world, we've got to cling to a certain God, an absolute God, a God that never moves, that never changes. His promises are sure. They are yes and amen because he's not a liar. He is always for our good and he will turn this around for our good if we allow him to. So that means we've got to stand firm in our faith. We've got to have the right attitude. We've got to walk in an attitude of expectation of greater things. Hi, Nick. How are you? One of the best producers on the planet there. Hi, Linda. Hey, Feliz. How are you? Oh, so many people are on. Joe Riccardi. How are you? So many good people. Thank you for coming on. I'm just, I'm excited. I am hopeful. I am, hi, Dr. Cherie. I am excited about what God is doing during this time. You know, some people will say, oh, it's the end times. No, it's not the end times. You know, the Thessalonians thought it was the end times. Every generation has thought it is the end times. I think we do that because we're wanting Jesus to just come and rescue us when we get uncomfortable. But he says, these are just the birth pangs. This is just the beginning of the end. And so many things have to occur. But in between there, it is important for us to be ready to meet him. I don't want him to come till I know I'm really ready. And I think I'm really ready. But I want all my loved ones to be ready too. So it is very, very oh, the concert halls. <laughs> Antonio, rest assured that everyone will be ready for entertainment when this is done. You are going to be so busy, your head is going to spin. I'm telling you that now. In Jesus' name. That's the thing. When the pendulum swings, it swings severely to the left, and then it swings severely to the right. And so this might seem like a huge time of lack, and then it's going to swing all the way to a place of uh, abundance. 
So you know what? If you've got any extra money laying around, you need to buy up everything in the stock market now because it's not going to stay down forever. I wish Miss Lynn Richardson was on the line because she would tell you the same thing. Rich people buy low and sell high. And so if you've got anything laying around, Get some stocks, baby. Buy them. Buy that stuff up now while it's crashed and low because it will swing back up. Enjoy the low gas, but invest in some of it too, okay? Stay hopeful, people. I just wanted to come on and just reassure you that God is up to something good and that even though it might be uncomfortable right now, um, some of you that are saying you have cabin fever, don't have cabin fever. There's a lot for you to do in your house. Bob, oh my gosh, how are you? Oh, I love you guys. I wish I could come to Winnipeg again. I just love, love, love you and Audrey. Say hello. How's Willard? How's and Betty? How is everyone in Canada? Anyway, I got distracted for a minute because I saw somebody I love. I love Bob and Audrey. Used to have such great times in Winnipeg. You know what, Bob, this is funny because just today I was talking about when I was in Winnipeg for 9-11. And that's what it feels like this time when I was in the airport and nobody was there in Chicago or London Heathrow. It threw me back to uh, the time that I was in Winnipeg when 9-11 happened and everything just bottomed out. I remember I had to drive from Winnipeg to Fargo. Can you imagine? And then when I got to Fargo, hi Cliff, when when I got to Fargo, I got on an Amtrak and I had to wind all the way back to Chicago from Winnipeg. It was beautiful though. I got to see some scenery I didn't even know was out there. It was gorgeous. And then I had to go to... um um. I had to go to do a show for James Robinson in Dallas, Texas. And I was the only person on the plane. Everyone was afraid to fly. Yes, North Dakota. Can you believe it? I drove from Winnipeg to North Dakota with the last rental car on the lot because no planes were flying. And then a week later, I, I got to go to Dallas, Texas to tape the James Robinson show. And there was no one on my plane. It was the craziest thing. They let me sit in first class. <laughs> I, I was a time. You hear me? I mean, that was something else. And I remember Betty and Willard left me because they were going to Vancouver to open a new TV station. And I was in the station in Winnipeg all by myself. I will never forget that time. Yes. Do you know that Texarkana is where my grandmother used to live? So I've got, I had family in Texarkana. Hi, Rain. How are you? So anyway, that's what re it reminded me of. And it's, it's amazing that you popped up because I was sharing that with someone this morning when I was uh, recording some stuff here in London. Um, I get to go home in a couple of days after taping for a couple more ministries in this area. And then I will be on self-quarantine for 14 days. I wanted to go to Nigeria to take a class. I don't know if I'm going to get to do that. Because uh, everyone is trying to be super cautious, which they should be. Um, but I also just want us in the midst of the caution to look at it more as responsibility and not as fear. Not as a fearful tactic. So let us not be bound by that. Let us see past this to the good part, to be uh, uh, strategically responsible at this time and um, look forward to better days and learn what we need to learn during this time. Get yourself together. Get your money together. Get your business together. Get your relationships together. Um, please, I beg everyone right now, Take advantage of the time that you're stuck in the house, as you would like to think in your head, you're stuck in the house together, but you're not stuck in the house together. It's an amazing opportunity for you to rediscover one another, to bond. Yeah, parents are helping their kids with schoolwork, but 
Pull out a board game. When was the last time you played Monopoly or watched a good movie together or played cards, played Uno or something? You know, rediscover living, loving, and laughing together. Get off the phones. Get off of all the social media stuff that distracts us away from the real relationships and the real people in our lives. I think that it's a great opportunity for doing that. I think that... uh, God uses circumstances like this. He certainly doesn't cause them, but he does use them to say, hey, wake up, pay attention to what's important. And what's important is our relationships. Isn't it interesting that at the heart of this whole uh, situation, we're told to be to social distancing, that it's all about isolation. And yet God is about relationship, not isolation. Um, isolation can lead to us really belly gazing and looking at ourselves. And that's not a bad thing. Reconnect with yourself, reconnect with God and reconnect with others. Reconnect with those relationships that, Hey, Linda, how are you? You know what? I have some bracelets I left for you in Chicago. Please, um, send me your address so that my sister can send them to you. I sent a note to Anna, but I haven't heard from her. So please make sure that you send me your address because I've got some beautiful bracelets I had made for you that I wanted to send to you. Um, So as I was saying about relationships, at the heart of this whole epidemic, pandemic, um, it has brought on the spirit of isolation. But Roosevelt, hello, how are you? But God is about relationships. So isn't it interesting that Everything in the natural has a spiritual parallel. And what we've got to be aware of is that there are always two agendas at work. There's the enemy's agenda and there's God's agenda. And we get to decide uh, which side of that war we're going to be on. See, the enemy is all about fear because it cancels out faith. The enemy is all about isolation because it destroys relationships. The enemy is all about focusing on on the dirtiness of it all. When God is about uh, cleansing and refreshing and sanctifying us. And so what we've got to know at this time is that God has already superimposed his purpose over every device and every agenda that the enemy has in place. Instead of isolation, he is going to cause us to embrace even greater relationships. Isn't it interesting that we all have a common enemy right now? The coronavirus doesn't care what color you are, what gender you are, what political party you are, what age you are. He doesn't care. Our enemy is invisible. And guess what? Everybody has the same enemy. That enemy is not respectful of any, any kind of of, of category of person. Young, old, rich, poor, black, yellow, white, red, gender, Republican, Democrat, whatever you are, religion. He doesn't care. Our invisible enemy is the common enemy, and that should be a great unifier as we bond together to try to work through this season together. So I hope that during this time, you'll keep these things in mind. It's subtle. If you look at just the natural, you'll miss it. So get spiritual eyes, become discerning about what God is trying to call our attention to. He's calling us back to himself. We've got to destroy all the other idols now. Remember when they had put that idol up in the temple and God knocked it down in the middle of the night and they put it back up and he came and he knocked it down again and cut off its hands, put it back up. They knocked off his head. God is saying, get rid of the idols. Get rid of the way you insist your life should look. Get rid of the way you think uh, you should acquire things the way you should do things, the things you need to got to have to have. He wants to open you up to a new life. He wants to open you up to a new way of doing things. He wants to open you up to a greater, more glorious way of living life. But that means being willing to let go of the old. Have you ever noticed when a business wants to get bigger and better, they call in a team called change management. They come in and they assist how the company was running. And sometimes they get rid of some folk because he know, they know that if those people remain, they won't be able to move forward with a new way of doing things because those people will insist on the old way. 
Well, God is shaking up everything that can be shaken until nothing that, that all the things that are firm cannot be removed. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Roosevelt, um, DM me your number and I'll call you. Okay. I love you. It's been a long time. Anyway, um, he is shaking everything that can be shaken until those things that cannot be shaken shall remain. Stand firm, my friend. God is up to something. I am telling you, this is not a bad thing that's happening. It seems uncomfortable. It seems scary. But really, the end result of it and the things that it brings about are going to be mind-blowing. You're going to say, whoa, we had to go through this to get to that? Wow. It's going to be amazing. So let's change our mindset. I don't want you walking in fear. I don't want you feeling like, oh, I'm stuck in the house. I'm getting cabin fever. I have to do isolation. You don't have to do isolation. You get to do isolation. Think back to when you were busy and you said, oh, I wish I could just have one day off. Oh, I wish I had the time to do this. Well, now you do. God has given you the time. This time is a gift to you. Isolation is a gift to you. Staying at home is a gift to you. And you know what? You have everything you need right there in that house. Go in your kitchen. If you look in the cabinet, this is, this is a can of beans that's been in there for 10 months that you forgot about. <laughs> oh, yes, I know about that. Mm -hmm. You're going to discover some stuff that you've overlooked, okay? So I want you to change your mindset about this time. Change your point of view about the days ahead. Okay, so say you're in the house for two weeks. You know what? There's no excuse at the end of that two weeks for you not to have cleaned out your closets and gotten some bags ready for Goodwill for some folks who are going to need some clothes, uh, to throw out some things that you don't need, to get your paperwork in order. Maybe it's time for you to, uh, you know, really focus. You've been getting ready to do your taxes, getting ready to do your... um. You're, uh, oh, I've been meaning to write a will for a while. Reggie Wells, oh my gosh, I want to come through the phone and just hug you. How have you been? Oh, it's so good to see you on here. I love you. Come visit me in Ghana. Come. Come on, guy. Talked to Bill Tramiel the other day. Anyway, um, so all I was saying is that now is the time to get your affairs in order. Because let me tell you what happens. When our foundation is worked out well, it makes room for the new thing that's coming in your life. Success happens when preparation meets opportunity. What things are you not prepared to do? If you had an opportunity right now, are you ready? That is the question. You know, I've been writing songs with my group Relevance in Ghana. If a publisher approached me right now and said, what you got? I could say, whoop, hey, I got 200 songs. That's what I got. I'm ready. I am ready for success. If a publisher approached me right now and said, do you have a new book? I could say, hey, yes, here's the proposal. Oh, and you know what? I've got one more. I'm going to go home and finish during my 14 day sit in. Now is the time to gear yourself up for the next level of success and open doors that are sure to come when this is over. And for those of you who've been thinking of ways to have new businesses, look around you and see what is needed right now. Well, we know hand sanitizer is gone. Uh, you know, those people have made a mint and they probably never saw it coming, but they've run out of supply. You see what I'm saying? When it's time for success to happen, you have to be ready to fill the demand. So what do you have in you that you can offer the world? What is the next thing that you have in you that you will make you ready for the next wave of whatever happens? Because as I said, this is just a test. Oh, this is just the beginning of many things. You think this is bad? Something else will happen and we'll say, oh, the corona was mild in comparison to this. You know, um, we went through Ebola. We went through uh, influenza. So there's always something. We don't know what the next thing will be. But I bet you this, you'll be more prepared if you can weather this trial properly. So it's all about preparing your heart, preparing your mind to be strong and steadfast. Amen? 
You know, God is not raising wimps. Christianity is not for wimps. Those who think that it's a crutch, <laughs> they just have no idea. It is about it is about standing firm, growing up. Yeah, I said grow up. And I'm not insulting you when I say that. But people, we are entering a new era. 2020, I know everyone was forecasting was going to be the most amazing year. And you're probably saying, what happened to all those prophecies? Well, the year isn't over yet. And God says, I want to give you a glorious year, but I got to clean up some stuff first. I need you to pay attention to this. I need you to put this in order. I need you to get rid of that. Hmm. That is what time it is. Time to self-examine. Time to get in front of God and say, God, here I am. Talk to me. What do I need to get rid of? Hi, Shonda. Oh, I miss you so much. I miss you so much, girl. I love you. You hear me? I'm sending you kisses. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Anyway, what I was saying is, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Now is the time to expose your heart like never before and say, God, renew in me a right spirit. Cast me not away from your presence. Give me a clean heart. Show me the areas I need to clean up. Because you know what? I am sad. I'm sad about a couple of things. I am sad because I believe the church has gotten off track. The church, the purpose of the church is for us all to grow in the knowledge of God. The word says it over and over and over again. Everything is based on our knowledge of God. Everything else is a lie. That's why it says to cast down imaginations and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. If you've got a thought going on in your head that exalts itself against what God has said, it is a vain imagination. And the church has gotten into business. They want to tell you fluffy things that make you happy and make you want to give. But they're not necessarily the things that will do the work in your heart to get you in position to truly be blessed by God. See, salvation is free, but blessings are conditional. God expects something from us in order for us to get specific things. We can't buy blessings from God. So, you know, all that sowing and all of that stuff. I'm, you know, really when God wants to bless you, he's going to bless you, but he's blessing you based on his pleasure of you. And so we've got to get back to that intimacy, the intimate relationship with God that he wanted to have before the beginning of time. We were created for intimacy with God. Out of the intimacy, all the other things come. But you know, when a man truly loves a woman, he'll give her anything. When your father truly enjoys the love of his children, he will give you anything. And guess what? If you truly love the father, you won't want, you won't want anything other than what he wants for you. And that's when he gives you the desires of your heart because your desires become his desires and he'll always bless his own plan. Someone was talking to me about uh, activating certain things in God. And I said, we don't have to activate anything. God is always active. We just need to get in the center of his activity in order to be in the flow to receive the blessings of God. So I, I just think that this is a wake up call to get back to the basics. It's you and me, God. My relationship with God over all things, not looking at his hands for what he has to give me, but looking at his heart for how he feels towards me, his intentions towards me, loving him properly so that his hands are open to bless because he's responding to my love. My giving is my thank you to him. My giving is not in exchange for a blessing. My giving is my way of saying thank you. I can never give what he has given. I'll never be able to match it. And so I just want to encourage you that during this time, it's about recentering your spirit, washing your hands, drawing close to God, relationship, drawing close to the people in your life that really matter, reconnecting, reconnecting, digging deep into your faith, 
Go back to the word of God. There's so many amazing translations out there now. I'm in love with the Passion Translation. I love the Contemporary English Version, the New Living, uh, the Message. All of them break it down for you in ways that you can understand. I know that if you don't understand the word, you can't apply it. And if you don't apply it, you will not reap the benefits of the blessings that God has promised you. So it's important during this time for you to draw close to God. Get back in his word. Be still in his presence and know that he is God and hear what he wants to download to your spirit. What strategies and instructions he has for you to continue in life. He might have a witty invention or a new idea for you during this time while you've got time to work on it that can prosper you in ways above and beyond your imagination. Allow him to heal you. Allow him to minister to you. In a supernatural way, you know, we're so busy looking for the spectacular sometimes that we overlook the supernatural, which is far more spectacular and far more lasting. So I hope I have, I've said a lot, so I'm going to stop talking. I just had a lot in me and I just wanted to reach out because guess what? I had time. (laughs) I might do it again tomorrow simply because I have time. Time. You see how that works? When we have time, we get to do things that are important that we may have overlooked. I'm so happy I've seen so many of you today and reconnected with so many people that I haven't seen or heard from in a while. And I'm going to call Roosevelt because he sent me his number while I was on here. I love you guys. Reggie, I love you. Peggy, I see you. I love you. Linda, uh, Latrice, everyone. Gretchen. I love you guys, okay? And just, you know, keep me in your prayers because I'm in London and I still got to get home. But I'm going to be back on. I've enjoyed my time with you. Don Joy, if you're still there, I love you, sis. And we're going to do that Pilates thing the next time that um, I'm in Chicago. Jeff Morrow, I love you, old chocolate man. I know you got t- you're got having some fun. Having I, I saw your wife was cooking for you. You should have invited me down. See, I'm sitting here in London, um, and I got to go look for something to eat. Oh, that sounds so good about now. Yes, I'm hungry. But um, I'm going to be taping a message for Pastor Agu at um, Jesus House UK. And um, I'm I'm going to be, hopefully, at a service um, for Nisi uh, Church, Nisi Family Church in London before I go home. And thank you. I appreciate all the prayers um, because I still got to make it home. And I'm grateful that they're going to let me in because I've got the right, uh, I got the right passport because they would be sending me back. Oh, Lord have mercy. (laughs) But as I told you, when I get home, I have to self-quarantine for 14 days. So you all might see me every day. Guess what? Because I got time. Yeah. See how that works? It's amazing. (laughs) So take advantage of the time. See that isolation time as a gift from God. Jeff, I know you're going to be writing some songs. You know, there's a new app. You should send me, um, you should send me some, some beats and I'll send you back some lyrics. How about that? We'll talk. We'll talk. We'll talk. Yeah. So there's a lot going on, but it's all good. Now is not the time to be fearful or anxious or depressed or, or any of that. Anticipate even greater things after this period is over. It's going to be amazing. I promise. You're going to write me and say, Michelle, I remember when you said that this was going to, yeah, yeah, I'm telling you now. This is making way for amazing things for the next level. We're moving to the next level. This is going to be a magnificent year. It's just not starting off the way we thought it was, but It's going to turn out for the good because that's what God promises, that all things will work for the good for those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Love you guys. I'm signing off for now and uh, I'll check back in real soon. I promise. Oh, before I forget, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Michelle McKinney Hammond. Subscribe, share it with someone else. Follow me on Instagram at McKinney Hammond, and that way you'll always know what I'm doing. And my music ministry is Relevance Life. So you can go on the website, relevancelife.org, or follow them on social media as well. 
There's a lot going on and I'm anticipating major open doors, divine connections, divine opportunities, leveling up to the next level. That's what I'm expecting and I'm expecting that for you as well. God bless you. I love you and I'll talk with you soon.